So Louis, uh, today I made a video in Swedish when I was walking on my lunch break and uh, I felt led to say what I said in that video but uh, then I got an email from one of my listeners it's called football123 I don't know if it's American football <laughs> <laughs> if it's soccer but never mind that's his alias name and he asked me a very obvious question uh, he asked me hi I have a question how do you get saved? There are many different opinions about this. Some people feel that you have to, all you have to do is believe on Jesus as your personal savior. In, in, in some other churches, they believe that you have to uh, take uh, part of the sacraments. I don't know what they, is it in English? That's the communion, the Lord's Supper. Yeah. <coughs> it feels like there about thousand different uh, views on this question and uh, I was rather amazed that uh, I got this question because you know after being saved so many years now three years for me uh, for me it's obvious what this is to be saved and I've written two blog entries about it too and I sent them to this guy I think it's a guy or woman I don't know so, obviously, even though I know we have been talking about this being born again and getting saved and in many videos, maybe not uh, available on YouTube yet, but on our, our Facebook page, Louis, Louis Clemenson's uh, Ministries, there you can find the videos about this. But then, anyway, I felt like uh, the Lord directed this guy because he, he felt that there is uh, some questions about salvation that we should address in a video so and then you got a message from the Lord today right yes I, actually it was yesterday yesterday yeah it was the before today me today okay what did the Lord tell you he told me the same thing he wanted me to <clears throat> talk about the gospel of salvation isn't that amazing and this is how God works in your life. Uh, uh, people wonder how do God communicate with us? Like this. It was when, like when I read Louis' book. Um, uh, Heaven can wait. Can't, can wait. Uh, and just a few weeks after that I saw Louis coming here to Riga to have a preaching. And that's how God prepared me to feel a desire to go and listen to Lewis and that was in October 2017 and now we are sitting here that's how God's plan was to br bring us together he brought us here to Riga in 2017 and now we are here and this is how God works in your life sometimes so what did the Lord tell you Lewis that's the obvious question well, I love to talk about the gospel of salvation, and I, I don't get very theological about it. I hope that's all right with you. I like to keep it simple and practical. And the gospel is simply that God sent His Son as a sacrifice for man, that He would sacrifice Himself so that God's wrath towards sin would be satisfied and that all of those who believed in Jesus as their Lord and Savior would appropriate for themselves everything that Jesus offered by his sacrifice. And uh, <clears throat> this message is throughout the Gospels and the letters. Uh, Paul's letter to the Romans is called the Constitution of the Gospel and uh, his letter to the Galatians is called the Magna Carta of the Gospel. It's, uh, it's throughout the entire New Testament that Jesus' sacrifice was for us that we might be saved. Uh, Paul is, is stressing in his letters very often that the, um, Jesus' resurrection is the, the core foundation in Christianity. Without 
his resurrection, there would be no Christian faith. Right. Could, could you elaborate a little bit on that? Yes. <clears throat> After Jesus, uh, when Jesus was on the cross, God put the sin of man on him so that sin would die with Jesus as the perfect sacrifice. And Jesus descended into hell for three days. And, and the Bible says just very briefly about how in hell he was, he was judged and found without sin. And then God released the greatest power that the universe has ever seen. And he raised Jesus from the dead. And that is the, the moment of victory when Jesus was judged and found to be without sin and was raised from the dead. And without the resurrection, then we cannot look forward to any resurrection. But because Jesus' sacrifice was deemed perfect and complete, then we can have what he provides. Yeah, and this is the core of Christian belief. If you believe that Christ, Christ was resurrected on the third day from the dead, then you have accepted the core of Christian uh, belief. Okay. Well, there's <clears throat> the the Gospels and the and the letters set forth uh, exactly what you need to do, and it's not very complicated. It's really just two things: repent and believe. Now, in Luke thirteen five. Uh, Jesus says, but I tell you, no, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Repentance is the first thing. It's the first order of business. See, what God is doing is he's calling us to a whole new way of life, a whole new way of living. And he wants us to leave our old life behind. <clears throat> repent does not mean, oh, I feel sorry. It, it, it's not an emotional thing. It is a decision. Repentance is a decision. When Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee past those two boats, one of them had James and John in it, and he said, follow me. Well, James and John had to make a decision. Are they going to give up their old way of life? They didn't know that Jesus, they didn't know in their heart that Jesus was the Messiah at that point. But they left their boat, their fishing business. And the same with Peter and Andrew. Jesus just walks by and he says, follow me. And all four of these men followed Jesus. They gave up their old way of thinking, their old way of living. You cannot start a new life unless you leave the old one behind. All of us, being carnal human beings, we have a rebellious, independent mindset. All of us. Some of us are more independent and rebellious than others, but all of us, children of Adam, have an independent, rebellious mindset. And what God's calling us to do in repentance is to change our mind to leave behind the independent, rebellious mindset and start our life over like a blank piece of paper to let God start writing on the new pages of our life. The next thing that you must do to have salvation is to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the only begotten Son of God, that he died on the cross for your sins, and that God raised him from the dead. Now, inherent in, in this is the fact that it's Jesus who did this. Now, there's all sorts of heresies. The, the, the most common one is the Catholic heresy with salvation it is granted by membership in the church and Mary, worshiping Mary. But even the, even the simplest line of reasoning has to tell you that 
if you want to receive the redemption, the atonement, the, the ransom that Jesus has provided for our sin and the results of sin, then you must believe in Jesus. Believing in anybody else is not going to cut it. Believing in Mary or an angel or a, a dead person, it, it's, none of these people have paid the sacrifice for you. They haven't redeemed you. Believing in them is not going to get you what Jesus has provided and what you want, <laughs> what you want with everything in you is to receive what Jesus has provided. And when you do, you're born again. Now, um, Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3, he said, you have to be born again. Jesus is talking to this Pharisee, Nicodemus, who comes to him in the night, and Jesus interrupts his theological discussion and just lays it out to Nicodemus. He says, Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You cannot see the kingdom of God. What happens to you when you come to faith in Christ is such a dramatic experience that it's like being born all over again. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to back up here for a minute. Just telling God, God, I believe. I believe Jesus is the Christ. I believe He died on the cross for my sins. Just saying the words is not enough. You have to show God that you believe. You have to demonstrate your faith by giving Him your life. <laughs> this is the big hang-up. This is where people go to such extremes to invent some alternative, some theological alternative. But the truth is, the only way to show God that you really have faith, that you really believe that Jesus is Lord, is to make Him Lord of your life. And to do that, you have to give Him your life. I know this because for two weeks, <laughs> I just said it. I said, God, I believe. I believe. And nothing happened to me. And it was only when I gave him my life that I was changed, that God came into my life. And it's, um, it's such, a dramatic, some, such a drastic change that um, Michael and I can both tell you our, our story briefly. Michael, why don't you go first? Well, you know, I have written about it on my blog, but I can tell you a little short uh, summary. In um, 2016, uh, I was uh, subject to a trauma in my life, uh, and uh, I really fell. I re really was broken, and um, I was at the bottom. I, I spent the whole July of 2016 unable to get out of bed. That's how broken I was. And uh, I had no way ahead. Then, to go on, I didn't know what to do. And then, suddenly, uh, I felt the presence of Jesus. And I felt His love. And then I understood that now it's time for me to uh, go from being an agnostic to being a Christian and receive Jesus as my Savior. He called me. And I responded to that call that I got in my heart. And uh, that was in uh, July 2016, and uh, in November I had a friend here in Riga, Jan Velitz. Uh, I said to him in September that I, I want to be saved, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah, why don't you come here, he said. We have a service in October or November, and that's an excellent opportunity for you. So I came here. And uh, that was the second time, the first time, second time I met my wife-to-be, Irina. Uh, she was present on that day when I received the salvation and I felt for the first time the power of God. Um, I was at a home church and I uh, saw so people were falling to the floor around me. 
And I thought to myself, what is this? Why are people <laughs> falling? Are they sick? No, I didn't think that. But, and then I, okay, I will not fall. You can hurt yourself. And then they prayed for me and asked me if I believe that Jesus is my Savior, that you know, the sinner's prayer. And then, woof, something pushed me back. So I fell back on the floor. It was a stone floor, can you imagine? I didn't hurt myself. I was lying there and I felt the peace coming into me. I felt all anxiety, all worries that I had for the situation in Sweden and in my life, the chaotic life I had had, just disappear like that. And um, somebody took a picture of me lying there on the floor, actually two pictures, where you can see the darkness I had inside of me leaving my body. I've and, seen that picture. And it's in one of my blog entries on my blog. You can see the picture uh, of uh, the demons or demon I had inside of me leaving me. It was kicked out by, by the Jesus, by the power of God. So he didn't... That's how I received my salvation. And after experiencing something like that, I could just not deny that this is, wow, this is powerful. And then things started to change in my life. And um, today I consider myself as, as blessed as a man can be. That was my moment of being born again. It is remarkable that if you believe in Jesus, then you can have it, all of this. You can have everything that Jesus offers you just by believing in Him. Uh, it, it seems almost unfair, uh, too, too good to be true, but it is true that if we uh, believe in Jesus as the Messiah, as the, as the Lord of glory who died for us, then we can have all this. We can have salvation, everything that goes with it. It's it's a phenomenal offer, and to me, any thinking person would would jump at it. And this change that takes place in you mm -hmm. is so wonderful. I've seen a lot of people uh, come to faith in Christ and watched, just watched in awe as the power of God hit them. I. Um, I've told this story before, but this seems like a good time to tell it again. Um, this woman came to my law office. She was a secretary next door. And she said, I hear you're a Christian. Can you tell me about it? And I said, yes, and I did. I said, do you want to do this? She said, yes, I do. And uh, she was very, uh, she was about 30 years old, very attractive, very normal, uh, composed, uh, competent woman, obviously a very capable person. And uh, I said, okay, s repeat after me. Uh, God, I repent of my sins. She said, God, I repent of my sins. I said, I believe that Jesus is the Christ. She said, I believe that Jesus is the Christ. And when she said that, it was like a linebacker hit her, the way she lunged back in the chair, just physically thrown back in the chair. And tears just started gushing out of her eyes. And she was shaking and sobbing. And the power of God had hit her. And I didn't know her life, but... If she's like everybody else, she had brought a lifetime of sin to that moment, and yet it was all gone that fast. And the same with me. I was 22 when I got born again, and to my knowledge, I had never done a good thing. I, had, I hadn't done that much bad. I hadn't killed anybody. I wasn't a criminal. But I could not ever remember doing anything good. And yet, in the twinkling of an eye, when I gave my life to God, I was hit by the power of God. I was cleansed completely.
completely clean. And God even spoke to me and he said, Jesus is Lord. He said that twice, Jesus is Lord. I tell you, that was a voice I heard. And then he said, you owe all of this to Jesus. And I knew he was referring to what had just happened to me. And this is key to understand that when you believe you're getting what Jesus did for you, not anybody else, not a priest, not a pope, not a cardinal, not Mary, not a saint, you're getting what Jesus provided for you. And he provided everything that we need. You know, his name, Jesus, actually means salvation. Yeah. Yeah, if you felt that power, and it, when you fit, have felt that power in your life, the power of God hit you and you are struck to the floor, you know that this is not something <laughs> you imagine. This is real. And the thing that everybody says is, I feel so happy. Yeah. <laughs> and we have seen uh, 10 or 11 people getting saved now by Lewis Clemens and Ministry in WhatsApp. and. The, the same reaction on everybody. Everybody receives the Holy Spirit and s starts talking in tongues and laugh and, you know. <laughs> it's a typical symptom of being baptized in the Spirit. And, um, yes. Because God is good. You know, people have these goofy objections. The most common objections you hear uh, or, or, or you sense that they, they feel as though... Uh, God is going to take away all their fun. They're going to become some uh, do-gooder nerd and they're not going to have any more fun. But the truth is that your life begins now. That God swings open this door of life. And uh, I actually had a vision one time. <clears throat> and in the vision I saw myself. It was like two squares side by side. And in one square on the left, I was this young, uh, you know, virile young man, but I was all alone in a field with a sad expression. And in the square on the right, I was sitting in a group of Christians on the floor, and I was happy. And this spoke to me that before I got saved, I was not happy. I really, I was always looking forward to the weekend. Mm -hmm. We're going to have fun this weekend. Party, party. But not now. We're going to have fun this weekend. You're always looking forward to that time when you're going to have... But in Christ, it's so, so different. Yeah, it's different. You have fun every day. You have <laughs> peace every day. <laughs> yes. And... You, the, the other thing that, uh, that people stumble over, they always say, well, i got to get myself right first. I say, no, you can't get yourself right first. You're saved by grace through faith. This is in um, Ephesians. Paul writes, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one can boast. You're not going to be able to get yourself right to get saved. There's no point in it. You can't do it. And it's irrelevant. All of us come to Christ the way we are. He takes us just the way we are and cleanses us of all our sin. Don't tell yourself, oh, i got to get myself right first. It's not how it works. It's a waste of time, and you're not going to be able to do it. It's by grace through faith. And then Paul in Romans 4, 16, he explains to us <clears throat> why it's by faith. He says, God set it up this way by faith for two reasons. One is, in order that it may be in accordance with grace, because he wants us saved by grace, not by good works. He's going to get credit for it. Nobody can earn salvation. And the second reason is so that the promise may be guaranteed to all. 
Salvation does not depend upon how smart you are, how much money you give, how hard you work, how uh, good looking you are. Um, there are no <clears throat> human criteria that has anything to do with salvation. The dumbest, the ugliest, the poorest person can get just as st saved as the smartest, best looking, richest person. It's available to all because it's by faith. It's by grace through faith. And so, no matter what your condition is, you qualify. What you need to do is you need to repent, which means to change your mind, to... And your ways of life. Yeah, yeah. The funny thing is that what you decide very much before you were saved in your life is not relevant anymore when, when the Holy Spirit starts to change you. It, it's, uh, you become a uh, different person in what you do, not only about what, what you think. That's my experience. Yeah, yeah. And the, <clears throat> the fact that it's Jesus alone, I want to keep saying this, it's Jesus alone. And uh, when the apostles were preaching at the early church in Acts 4, Peter says, For there's salvation in no other name. There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved other than the Lord Jesus. Nobody else is providing this for you. So you believe in Jesus as your Savior. And in order to prove, to demonstrate, to manifest your faith, you give Him your life. Nothing short of that will suffice. You can say, I believe, I believe, I believe all day long. But it's only when you show God your faith by making Him your Lord and giving him your life, and then <laughs> you will, it will hit you <laughs> like a truck. So, best no, thing I ever did. Yeah, me too. Uh, no pope will uh, get you saved, no priest will get you saved, uh, no religion will get you saved, only faith in Jesus will get you saved, and that's uh, basically how easy it is. And it's a free gift, you won't have to do something to. to to get it, all you have to do is believe. Yeah. That's how simple it is. <clears throat> and tell with your mouth that you believe. Sin yes. pray. And if you have any further questions or need some help to get saved, please contact us. We have our contact details on previous video. And, and we'll be happy to lead you through this. We will help you, yes. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.